It was one day when I, when I was woken up um, by an alarm uh, of a program, from a program on the computer, which I would have, uh, I, would I have uh, written. And uh, I programmed uh, this program to give this um, alarming sound. You probably remember when you have your machine, when you boot the, the computer, you have this beep. So this program was programmed at this particular event to hammer this beep extremely intensively. And it was in the middle of the night. And I was really woken up by this extremely loud uh, and, and annoying sound. And, uh, and I, I, wo I woke up and I was, I couldn't believe it. Because I programmed my program to give this sound when the Bitcoin price hits 1,000 US dollars. I, I was, I, 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 still, I first of all thought maybe this, this, the program ran at an error or something, or uh, I was directly rushed to the computer and validated, and I, I couldn't believe. I mean, it was, was such a, uh, a journey from the beginning, 2019, to this moment in 2013 where it really happened, and um, the price sk uh, skyrocketed to that, uh, to that high price. Bitcoin, some of you might have heard it, uh, is this uh, huge innovation and in technology with, uh, which uh, makes it possible for people to transfer money from anywhere in the world to anywhere else without having any boundary or any uh, regulator or uh, authority uh, watching it. It's a, a huge innovation which makes it possible for people to transfer Money, for example, here you can send, with Bitcoin, you can send money to a coffee farmer in Africa without having 10 intermediary banks uh, that each take a cut on this transaction, maybe if, if even possible that uh, they will allow you to send this money. It gives people the option uh, doing finance without needing the banks in between. So it gives people an option. It was the first, it's the first time in, uh, in uh, humankind uh, where people have an option. I mean, all the time it was always, if you wanted to send any money, you always had to rely on banks sending the money. So now um, we were at this point and uh, the price was uh, above $1,000. And uh, I looked uh, to the, more to the right uh, on, my, um, on my window in, uh, the stu in my student accommodation, um, and uh, I was uh, seeing this machine here. This machine is a, is a Bitcoin mining machine, which, uh, which mines, uh, literally mines Bitcoin. Bitcoin um, is very comparable to gold uh, in the sense that uh, it is limited to 21 million Bitcoins in total, and uh, you can mine those Bitcoins um, more and more uh, over time, but it's uh, getting more and more difficult. It's similar to gold. I mean, at the beginning of the uh, times, it was easy to mine gold. Now it's getting more sophisticated. And this um, made an, uh, a huge opportunity. And uh, uh, I, mean, I, I was just uh, looking there, and I, 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 I knew this machine right now was making so much just from the mining of the Bitcoins, that within a few days, the whole investment of the machines already uh, bro broke even. So you already got your money back when you would have bought the, those machines in a few days because of this high price. So um, I, was, I was stunned. I directly uh, uh, called uh, my partners and said, guys, we have to move. This is a huge thing, and it's a big opportunity. We are in the middle of a gold rush. Right now, these machines, you can mine the Bitcoins, and it's so, so profitable. Um, just for you to, to understand, I mean, uh, mining is uh, needed in Bitcoin because uh, you don't, Bitcoin is not a centralized system. There is no one in between, no, no central authority or central entity that controls any transactions. It's a fully decentralized system. So compared to MasterCard or Visa, you have central parts and they validate the transaction, but they can, because of the central character, they, uh, they can get attacked or, 
Uh, there's all sorts of, of things, and of course, you always have to trust Visa and MasterCard. For Bitcoin, you don't have to trust anyone. It's based on the blockchain, and um, there is no such central entity. For this to work, you need people like miners that validate the transactions on a decentralized level, and they are spread amongst the world. Everyone can mine. As I said, um, it's getting more and more challenging and difficult to mine. I just want to give you one uh, example. Very back in the days, when the first years of, of Bitcoin, uh, there was one uh, gentleman in the UK who uh, used his laptop to, to, to mine Bitcoins. And by that time, it was possible because the competition was not, was not so big and uh, he could literally mine a lot uh, with his laptop, so he, he, he did it. But, by that time, it was so early that uh, Bitcoin not, didn't even have a price. There was not even a marketplace because it was really in, in its in infancies. So, but he did it. And uh, I don't want to <laughs> blame the girlfriend, but at one point, uh, she uh, supposed to said that, uh, why do you run this machine all the time? It's getting hot and, uh, and uh, it's not doing anything. I mean, those virtual tokens, what, 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 what does that bring? So at one point, he, he stopped it, and um, he just went on. Everything was back to normal, and uh, he was at a breakfast uh, a time later. He put off his newspaper, and, and he read that Bitcoin is now trading at $100. So he couldn't, I mean, he couldn't believe what's going on. How can this be true? So he jumped off, and he directly, and because you can track that, you can see it, uh, check the blockchain, how much Bitcoin did he mine, actually? He could see that in, in, this, in the blockchain uh, ledger. And it was more than 300,000 Bitcoins. By that time, it was $100. So these 300,000 Bitcoin turned into three, $30 million. So he directly said, wow, oh my God. So, but then he quickly realized, this computer has been put in, a, in the trash. Because he didn't, he stopped doing it. His girlfriend then annoyed him with this, and it, um, and uh, yeah, the solution was he put it in the trash. So of course he was a clever man. He said, "I mean, thirty million dollars is now on this computer. Where is this computer? It can't be. It, it can't be just um, disappeared." So um, he tra He he was researching where these uh, things are put when he puts it into into trash, and uh, he started a. Uh, um, <laughs> He collected money in order to, uh, to go on this uh, waste disposal it was brought to and search on this waste disposal for this computer. It's $30 million. <laughs> it's a crazy story. So he got the money, a, f a little bit of money, and they, they did a good, a good amount of research. I mean, it was an attractive deal for investors if they would have found the computer. It's a $30 million. Right now, because the Bitcoin is more than 1,000, it's uh, $300 million. So the, sad, the, the, the story ends, uh, unfortunately, sadly, um, they didn't find the computer. And those coins are still lying on this computer, which is probably damaged, but it's still there. So, um, but ju this just shows how incredible those very early times were. And um, I was in my room and got this alarm, and, uh, and I was looking at my mining machine, and I was just saying, I mean, um, we have to move now. It's, this is the big opportunity. There, it's the gold rush. So um, I, I, we didn't hesitate, and uh, we directly had the plans. We have to move. We have to do something now, and we have to scale this up and make it very big. We realized very quickly that, of course, as it is very often in the world, uh, there were a lot of other people that uh, were, were aware of this as well. So uh, we realized that on a whole world, globally, those cards, the graphic cards in those machines were sold out. Everywhere in the world, all the big retailers in the States, in, uh, in China, um, uh, Europe, etc., were all sold out. So they've all bought that, and because they saw this, and um, 
Yeah, and probably even the retailers uh, have realized it and they thought, oh my God, why should I keep this, these, these cards in my stock so I just don't sell them anymore and just do the same and make more money by just uh, uh, compared to selling them. So what, what did we do? It's incredible, but we found, we found a retailer, not too, not too known, but quite big enough, in, Eu in Europe, that still had cards at, uh, uh, in, at the uh, inventory. So we did not uh, ask much questions, and we basically went full speed. And we, uh, <laughs> um, from that time on, um, we bought this retailer so much empty that uh, their, uh, their trucks that left their warehouse did nothing else than going into our facilities, which we have set up by that time in the Eastern Europe. It was nothing else. It was the tracks. We, over months, months of period, uh, they did that. And of course, I mean, the retailer, they called us and asked us, I mean, what the hell are you doing there? You're buying these, these cards and you're buying the, the, these professional cards, high-end cards, but you're also buying these uh, motherboards, low-end processors are not so good. And what does that make sense? And especially you're buying six cards for, uh, and one uh, motherboard. In your home computer, you normally have one card and, uh, and uh, a processor and, and, the, and the motherboard. So it's, I, they didn't understand what's going on. Of course, we didn't have any big intention to, to tell him because it was a dangerous thing, obviously. So we came up with uh, telling him we're doing facial recognition, image, image processing, and uh, it was fine. It was fine for them. I mean, we were a good uh, client, a big client, and they were happy for the revenue we generated, and we were happy for the machines we got. So um, we, we did that, and um, we have built, in a, within a short amount of time, a massive, or by that time, a very sizable operation in the Eastern Europe. And um, also in this town where we built it up, of course we had the same thing. I mean, what do we tell the people? Because it's a lot of money by that time. And uh, it's, very, it's of course dangerous. Um, we have to protect the facility, etc. cetera. And uh, it's, a, it's a small town, so the word go, goes around quite quickly. Um, so they also asked, of course, and uh, especially because there, there were guards guarding the, the facility, et cetera. But uh, also we had a good reason for them and it was credible. I mean, we told them it's a, it's a laundry because it steamed also. <laughs> there was a lot of steam and we, because those machines are very hot. So uh, it was fine. I, everyone was happy as well. Or, uh, uh, everyone went on uh, as usual. And um, I want to give you a little bit of an overview, uh, now an insight into, one of, in, into our first facility. And uh, you will see on the sound, it's quite a, uh, a uh, um, very loud uh, noise. And you can't believe that actually those cards, or which is equivalent to a computer, can be that loud. But if you have thousands of these cards together, just the fans create a huge noise. So let's get right on it. So you're hearing these massive amounts of fans generating uh, these noises and uh, our, our people in there had to wear, uh, wear earplugs uh, in order to, uh, to work there and the side effect was it was very hot as well because mining basically is transforming the electricity in 100% heat. So it was a kind of... Uh, um, sauna uh, um, temperatures uh, like for our uh, workers. Um, but it was, it was uh, interesting and everyone was excited. So of course, I mean, this was the first step. We did that, we were very happy and it was incredible that this all worked out. But now we wanted to grow and wanted to make bigger steps because we had this uh, opportunity and, we, uh, and it was big, it was scalable. So we, put, we, we uh, came together and we discussed and did a lot of research and what we can do and especially where we can do it to make it, very big, make it much bigger than we already had. And that was not easy. There's a lot of factors. I mean, you have to, politi you have to think about political risks. You have to think about uh, the env environmental um, 
uh, conditions and you have especially uh, to think about low electricity prices. The place we ended up was really at the end of the world, in Iceland. What you see here is um, our facility that's, uh, that, what, what you see here is the power plant next to our facility in the middle of nowhere on this island. And um, we have done a lot of research and we found this opportunity. Uh, it was against, against any conventional ways. It was no way to get there in a normal way, asking some people and that's not how it works. So we had got a, a secret track around the conventional ways and you, we were able to pull this off. And um, we were fascinated and uh, yeah, what we have created there is the so-called Enigma Farm, which is the largest uh, mining facility for cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and uh, uh, also blockchain. And um, this uh, facility uh, uh, consists of more than 25,000 cards. And if you put all the computing capacity and if you sum it up all together, there is more computing power than the world's number one supercomputer in the world. I will show you now how it looks inside. We have the sound of the, compared to the first facility, is a different level. And uh, just on the one side, you see more than 10,000 cars. You see, you see the heavy turbines on the, uh, on the, on the roof. Uh, and you see also on the side the filters. You see here the electricity, the cables, just to give an uh, imagination of how much electricity that is consumed there. And, um, Yes, this facility is, uh, sets a milestone for us, and uh, of course, it's, uh, it, um, we were happy to pull that off as well and uh, get, went to this size. Of course, this unfortunately um, also attracts uh, a lot of an, a, uh, attention for not always the, the, the best um, reasons. So there is uh, people trying to hack the farm because it's a, about a lot of money just the electricity uh, rate. The electricity bill for this facility is more than a million dollar per month. Um, a, a lot of people are trying to, uh, to, to break in in various ways. Uh, it's very critical for us to keep that location secret. Um, and um, I think we have done a good job so far. But I have to also say that sometimes we experience things that uh, is very strange. I mean, last time, uh, for example, uh, we were there and there was a, a man coming in a black SUV um, and he cannot occasionally just step by. It's at the end of the world and somewhere in nowhere, far away from the population. Um, so, and he, we asked him, I mean, what, what, what is he going to do? And it was, uh, as, we, as was, was later figured out, it was an... Uh, industrialized uh, espionage attempt and um, that just shows how how critical uh, and how, how how much aware you have to be in that uh, space right now Enigma is powering the uh, blockchain in general and uh, as I said Bitcoin and uh, cryptocurrencies it's also because it's a gener generic computing powerhouse it's it can also do simulations uh, for medicine uh, uh, protein folding operations, and it can also be used for weather forecast. And um, we are very proud of, uh, of this and uh, that we um, took such an such a important place in this growing space of blockchain and Bitcoin. And um, we, are, we are thriving to, to grow further. And uh, I think what I just want, the message to you young people uh, shall be is that if you want something and you're really behind it, today, in the today's modern world, you can reach everything. Thanks a lot for your attention. <laughs>